Welcome back to Pentagram Prime, everybody. Today we're going to finish up the survey mission that I started in the last episode. It's broken up into three parts, Alpha, Beta, and Gamma. I should mention that the order I'm attacking the survey components in came down to whatever I was able to click on in map view. They are packed very closely on the map and it just came down to saying site beta came up when I hovered the mouse over that spot and then I just ran with it. Beta, of course, is the location that we took pressure readings from in the last episode, and this time we will be taking care of the latter two. As you can see, we're starting off with Site Gamma. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, send the rocket plane on a slight tilt out towards the end of the runway, wait for burnout, and then the plane to double over. After that, aim for the little green dot on the nav ball. The trickiest part, really, is just getting the timing right with the deployment of the parachute. The measurement for this contract does need to be taken from the surface, so don't waste your time trying to skimp by taking time uh, to do it in flight. It's just not going to work. With our data in hand, we can now recover the vessel and move on to the Site Alpha component of the Zone 8H-14 contract. Get ready for the pain. You ever see A Simple Plan with Billy Bob Thornton and Bill Paxton? Yeah, that's me trying to attack the alpha component of this contract. Just aim for the green dot, I thought. You'll be fine. Then I started missing the mark. Way too much horizontal velocity here. I got distracted in dealing with that, and oops, I didn't open my parachute at the right time. I also didn't think to take a closer look at what was left on the ground. Jeb was still breathing, and chances are I could have still taken data, but I opted for a do-over. So I buckled down, followed the green dot, and on this attempt I was careful enough with my altitude that I got the chute open on time. Unfortunately, I failed to notice the notification that said I was exiting zone 8H-14, and when I collected my data I found out that it didn't count. I thought to have a lawyer review the specific terms of my contract, but they don't have lawyers on Kerbin, so once again, my horizontal velocity got the better of me. Third time's a charm, and no dice. Fourth attempt, good shoot. Good data, and no fulfillment of contract. Fifth attempt. Now I just want it to be over. I did my best to veer further off to the left of the runway this time. Now, if you follow shows like Door Monster, and in particular their Black Pan series on film production, you may have heard advice like, quality does not matter on YouTube. I try to keep this in mind when deciding how much time to edit or to refly a given mission. Here, the trick for a perfect landing is to determine exactly where you need to be in the sky in order to descend straight down to the alpha site with zero horizontal velocity. But that's not what happened. And I've had videos that took 30 minutes wind up outperforming videos that took two days worth of production. So I'm just going to go ahead and run with what I've got. As with the first attempt, there was a crash, but this time I paid attention and took, took advantage of a breathing Jeb Kerman and a working pressure sensor. It felt good to be finished with this monstrosity and its dismal flight characteristics. It wasn't until I looked at the map of Kerbal Space Center that I realized that I had not fully recovered my craft. The wreckage strewn across the planes needed to be recovered separately and did earn me some funds for my fledgling budget. With a sense of accomplishment in hand, whether it be real or otherwise, I'm now ready to build, crash, repeat my way through the next contract. Till next time, this is Pentagram Prime, signing off.